Okay, we're on. So good, uh, let's see, good morning, Sydney, Australia. Good afternoon, Seattle, Washington, and good evening, Gaulish, <laughs> England. <laughs> Um, my name is Betty Martin. This is the free webinar on joyful embodiment. And as Katie and I were just talking, we realized that the name should ought to be embodiment is nothing but trouble. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. Um, I am a somatic sex educator, sex coach, um, mom, grandma, retired chiropractor in Seattle, Washington. And I, um, uh, mostly what I do these days is mentor and support other practitioners. And that's what brings me to this event. Um, Katie, will you introduce yourself? Somatic sex educator, artist. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, so I'm a, a somatic sex educator. I'm Katie. Um, um, I'm a somatic sex educator, a sexological body worker, and uh, I originally trained as, as an artist and an art psychotherapist. And um, I'm trained in shamanic teachings and I'm a performance artist as well. So all of these different strands are part of my practice, supporting people that come to see me who are essentially looking for embodiment, mm. um, which... Um, Brings, brings us into choice. Beautiful. Um, and with what we welcome into our lives. Thank you. Kurt, would you introduce yourself? Yep. Hi there. Uh, my name's Kurt Mason. Um, I am an Englishman living in Sydney, been here about 15 years. Um, my original profession is as a psychotherapist, a Gestalt psychotherapist. And last year I did the sexological bodywork training in the UK um, with Tej and Uma and Joseph Kramer. Uh, but the year before that I also did the Growing in Embodiment uh, retreat as a participant uh, where I met the lovely Betty. Um, I also teach meditation and am now practicing as a sexological body worker, so run workshops. Great, thank you. Yeah, last year, I want to say just a, a little bit about the Growing in Embodiment Retreat, which is what this call is basically in service to. And that is that a couple of years ago, um, Deej Juventin and Uma Furman, who are instructors in sexological body work in Australia, invited me down to do this advanced training for sexological body workers. And then the part of that was this five-day retreat for participants to come and be part of classes and workshops and rest and have a retreat and get sessions every day from the sexological body workers. So um, that's what Kurt was saying where he came as a participant. Um, and we'll talk more about that at the end, but um, I wanted to let you know that that is coming up in September in the UK. You can see it at cschoolofembodiment.com and also Betty Martin. Dot org. Um, and yeah, so let's talk about embodiment. What the heck is it? And why do we need it? And is it worth it? Because it's kind of a, it is kind of a bit of trouble. So I want to define it by saying um, that you've heard the expression, I'm sure, oh, so-and-so is really in their body and how, how beautiful and vile and, and attractive that is. Or, or you hear people say, or maybe you have said, oh, I'm just not in my body. And which is kind of a funny thing to say because there's nowhere else to be. You are actually in your body. What we're talking about there is that our body has a constant inflow of information coming through our nervous system, of course, up to our brains. It's where it's putting it all together. And all of that information that comes up here to our brains is what we then use to notice what state we're in. Are we hungry? Are we tired? Are we excited? Are we sad? Are we afraid? Are we, do we need to itch? Do we need to move? 
we've been sitting too long, you know, is our bum getting tired and we need to move? Is there a mosquito? We need to, all that information is coming up to us for us to then integrate and decide what to do next. Sometimes, of course, that decision is conscious and sometimes it's, it's automatic or unconscious and, and just part of how we express ourselves. So what happens is that for various reasons, our we we lose we start to cut off this flow of information that's coming up to our awareness because it's kind of a lot of trouble. Our feelings are maybe unpleasant, or our impulses don't fit the rules of what we're supposed to feel or supposed to want. So it can be confusing to have feelings that we don't know what to do with. Um, so we just learn to cut all that off. And we live in a, a Puritan culture. Us Americans and you Europeans live in a Puritan culture, which basically says, don't want too much, don't have too much pleasure. And essentially, we're not really supposed to have a body to begin with. So we just shut it all down and keep it quiet. And that lets us get through school, it lets us have jobs, it lets us carry on in our lives without really being very alive and um, uh, you, could go, you could go along like that for your entire life, many people do. But what we're wanting to explore and offer is the opportunity to wake up these connections between our awareness and our body sensation and our body awareness so that we can feel more alive. We have more information about what state we're in because we, when we can do that, we'll know we can make good decisions for ourselves. We know what we're drawn to and what we're not. We learn um, what looks healthy and appealing to us and what does not. So it's all that information coming in from our bodies that lets us not only experience joy and play and fun and pleasure, but lets us make good choices for ourselves. Well, the problem with that, as I mentioned, is that you not only become more aware of the pleasure and joy that you're capable of, you become more aware of old feelings and emotions which you just might really rather not feel. And so that's why I say, that's why I say um, it's kind of a lot of trouble. So I'm seeing somebody sharing their screen. Huh. Okay, I will assume that that's gone. Um, so that's why I say, you know, embodiment can be a bit of trouble because once we start to wake up, we notice things about ourselves that we didn't notice before. We feel feelings that we forgot that we have. They've been there all along, but we haven't been in touch with them. Um, and of course, we risk having more pleasure and more fun, which you may or may not want in your life. Not everyone does. So that's what I mean by embodiment. The ability to notice what you feel, what the sensations are, our ability to express who we are with how we move in our bodies as opposed to being stuffed shirts and our ability to experience our feelings as well and make decisions um, based on our self-knowledge and self-awareness. That's what embodiment is about. Um, Katie or Kurt, you want to add anything to that? Everyone else, please. Um, Hi, Betty. I missed that. My, 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 my internet connect. Okay. I was please. asking if anyone wanted to um, add anything to that. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to mute this person here. And this person here. And this person here. So it looks like Kurt and Katie, you are the only ones that that we can hear so please go ahead um 
Yeah, well, look, I think you've covered a lot of it, really, as far as what my understanding and what my experience of embodiment has been. Um, I think for me personally, when, I, when I've done any kind of embodiment training or any kind of embodiment work, the idea of uh, what, you're, what you're saying about the, 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 the kind of stepping into trouble, um, uh -huh. you know, the, the problems that can come up around, um, they're, always, they're always, I think, where we find ourselves on the, on the edge of ourselves. Uh -huh. You know, it's like we, yeah. we sort of, we find, for me, it's like I, I, I'm, I'm on the edge of myself and I'm stepping into something that isn't known. Or, yeah. or I've forgotten, you yeah. know, like yeah. I have forgotten that there or that I had that capacity or that mm -hmm. I had that experience. And, mm -hmm. and so there's a, there's a risk involved, I think, in, in the embodiment. And, the, and the, the beauty is when you find yourself in a space where the person who's working with you in that space is working just ahead of you. Mm -hmm. you know, just ahead of you so mm -hmm. there's 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 enough tension there to feel um all this is new and there may be a little bit of anxiety and there may be a little bit of excitement but it's not too overwhelming for the system that it completely shuts down yes you know yeah yeah um, yeah so that that to me when is when my embodiment's been worked with really well yeah and that's part of the job of a practitioner or someone who's supporting you is to support you at that edge where it's useful but not overwhelming yeah yeah yeah, yeah. beautifully said I guess, it, I guess we're talking almost about that resilient edge yes that edge of uh, where our resilience begins to expand and so yeah. we expand and we become yeah, just yeah. more ex resilient human beings on this earth <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I once was at a workshop where they asked, it was about change and how difficult change is sometimes. And what they asked us was, w imagine yourself five years from now, not having changed at all. Mm. And I thought, mm. that's a horrifying idea. You know, uh, it really made me stop and notice, oh yes, actually, I do want change because you know that our inner impulse to grow is mm. I mean that's so much of what keeps us alive or it, that uh, what life is yeah and growing is you bump into that edge as you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. beautiful beautiful um oh I'm Still managing that people coming going here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's that. <laughs> Thank you. Right in the nick of time. Lost, lost internet. It just completely dropped. What, what out. we were just saying is that. Um, Where are we up to? We're. I was asking Kurt and you to add any other thoughts about embodiment, and Kurt was talking about the being at the edge of ourselves and having this kind of support that lets us. Um, grow and come to the kind of scary edge but not get overwhelmed so other thoughts that you might have and then you have an experience to lead us in about embodiment I do get the irony of having a talk about embodiment when we're all sitting on our whatever is <laughs> watching this screen <laughs> it is kind of ironic um, but Katie yeah. does have something she's going to lead us through to help us increase that, uh, that body awareness because learning more body awareness is extremely simple. Um, so uh, Katie's going to give us something there that lead us through. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, for years, I mean, I've done years of Tantra training, mm -hmm. there's all the breathing exercises, and I've right. just, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do the breathing, let's get on with the action now, you know? right. <laughs> and I've, I've had years of resistance to breathing, I've had years of resistance to embodiment, um, sure. because um, f actually being embodied really means showing up in life really yeah. means taking responsibility yes really means you know actually you can't do things that you can't actually go along with stuff anymore yeah you have to 
attention to what is true and, yeah. and you've got a much fuller picture it's much more responsible it's it's fucking growing up you know yeah. <laughs> can't exactly. be a child anymore actually can be more of a child. Me, yeah. be more free but actually i've it, it really is showing up um yeah. in the yeah. space and yeah. um the sex training for the first time after loads of years of, of tantra training um i once i understood the mechanics mm. of what happens when we breathe mm -hmm. i can now agree to do that mm. because i understand the mechanics of it and that was a complete breakthrough for me oh wonderful so instead of just breathing Max instruction, which I actually, you know, you can give me that instruction, but actually, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable and I don't really sure. want to do that. And, yeah. you know, yeah. should I? Yeah. If I'm going to feel all this stuff that I haven't got the containment to yeah. experience. Yeah. So, yeah. So, will you, will you lead us through a few minutes? I guided a mini guided tour Great. Of, of the breathing, breathing apparatus. Beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. And why it supports relaxation. Yeah. And that then is motivating. Uh, just bearing in mind my internet connection is mm -hmm. quite um, unstable if, here. So, if you get dropped so to begin off, with, the first, the first thing to do is to, is to relax um, your, your body. So just notice, first of all, everybody notice if you're sitting a little bit un more uncomfortably and adjust how you're sitting notice where the weight of you is being supported taking your attention inside and notice where there's any tension it might be in your shoulders or your spine or your neck and gently move your body to adjust parts of you that might have been quietly putting up with discomfort. Mm. You might need to stretch, mm -hmm. stretch your jaw, and taking your attention inside and notice First of all, noticing where your attention goes to in your body, is going to in your body right now. It might be to your feet, somewhere. I think we're losing some of this connection, so I'm going to keep going until Katie gets back. But take, bringing your uh, uh, attention to wherever you notice it might be your feet, might be your belly, might be your head, might be your back. And noticing what is there. Does it feel full? Does it feel sharp? Does it feel round? Does it feel hard? Whatever it whatever that feels so bringing your attention there and that bringing your attention to where you notice the sensation is is what allows you to keep noticing that sensation and bringing your attention to it is a is a choice that we make anytime all the time we choose where we put our attention so bringing your attention right to that spot for me, there's a place on the left side of my belly that I can feel. Ah, and then let yourself take in as much air as you want. So it is possible to force yourself to breathe fully, but there, we're not forcing anything here. Take in all the air that you want and see what happens as you let your belly, your abdomen, expand with that. What sensation changes there? Bringing your breath, if you can, you can notice the sensation of breathing as fully as much as you want, letting it all the way out, all the way out. 
And then you can imagine as you breathe in your breath going to that place that you were noticing a moment ago. So it might be your knee, it might be your shoulder, it might be your head, it might be your back. So breathing in and imagine sending your breath right to that place. And see what happens as you uh, notice more and more about that place. You're bringing your attention where you want it. Ah, and then another full breath of as much air as you want so that your body can take that all the way into your belly. And again, feeling the shape of your belly as your breath expands it. The, your waist, your belt around your waist, your shirt over your belly and your chest. So you're bringing in that sensation. Ah, and then another great, big, luxurious, ah, breath and let it out with a sound. Let a sigh come out. Ah. ah, and there's something about opening your jaw to let the sound out that is particularly sweet. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Ah, and maybe another little shake if it wants to come out. It seems to be wanting to come out for me. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That's a teeny tiny taste of beginning to allow your sensations all the way up into your brain. Yeah. Katie, you want to add anything? We we improvised while you were away. <laughs> yeah, that's so great, Betty. Thank you. <laughs> uh, before my internet connection zips out, um, I did the biological explanation of what happens. So uh -huh. if I if I quickly share that now, then that would be great. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then um, so you've all had the experience of of breathing more deeply and you've experienced yourself relaxing and slowing down and becoming more aware of sensations inside of your body that you perhaps were not so aware of before you focused oh. inside. So what's actually happening when we breathe deeply, the diaphragm is physically connected to the heart muscle. It's actually ph physically mm -hmm. connected with a, some sort of ligament there mm -hmm. and literally massages the heart. So mm -hmm. when you breathe in and you push your belly out, you're massaging the heart muscle, mm -hmm. which is um, the place in our body where our heart's desires are. Mm -hmm. It's the, the place in our body where it's, it lights up the wisdom of what we want and what we need and what we're longing for and what we feel passionate about and what we want to protect and mm -hmm. um, what's vital to us and attached to the heart muscle as we breathe more deeply and we massage the heart we're also massaging the thalamus gland which is the center of our body's immune system which is also about protection protection of our life mm -hmm. and so the heart is a place of love but it also um, is very very connected with the instinctual drive of rage which is in service of protection mm -hmm. of what we value so, so the more connected we are with our hearts and what we value the more we need to be an authority in mm -hmm. our lives mm -hmm. with what is important to us and the less we can tolerate putting up with and going along with disassociated mm -hmm. yeah and so that's where embodiment is so vital because it actually does connect us with really stepping into the authority of what we truly mm. love or you know what we truly want to do with yeah. our lives and that's all in the breathing beautiful it also when we're breathing deeply, we're massaging our kidneys, which massages the adrenal glands, 
which then have a break. They will say, oh, oh we can stop producing cortisol now. Uh-huh. <laughs> and this then supports um, a, a switch from the sympathetic action-based nervous system into the parasympathetic nervous system, oh. which is where we can grow in arousal from that place to have a more sustainable intimacy and mm-hmm. pleasure. Mm-hmm. And, and it's where we connect with what's really true for us in our bodies. Oh. You know, where oh. everything slowed down um, sufficiently for us to then have more communication mm-hmm. uh, between our bodies and our heads um, and our minds negotiating body sensations and feelings. Right. And at the same time as our diaphragm is massaging our heart and our thalamus gland and our adrenal glands into relaxation and connection, it's also massaging the connective tissue around the spine, which is called the dura. Mm -hmm. And connective tissue surrounds the the brain, which becomes the meninges. Mm -hmm. As you relax, as we breathe deeply, you can actually, if, if you breathe deeply, you can feel your spine gently moving as you take a deep breath in and mm-hmm. what that's doing is it's loosening up the connective waters if you like it's mm-hmm. um it's supporting more communication mm-hmm. to pass between the body and the mind and um because when we're in um stress responses to life or action mode mm-hmm. responses mm-hmm. to life or we've experienced trauma what happens is that dura that connective tissue mm-hmm. literally distorts yeah. and yeah. and restricts our availability to receive what's true for us because actually if, if I feel what's true for me and I've got to live in a society or a family or a situation where you know it's going to hurt me mm-hmm. to be in what because I have for my survival I've got to go along with what other people want mm-hmm. then you know it's 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 a lot easier to be in a place of disconnection and, mm. and disassociation and the Beautiful. extreme of that yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're really, you know, the, the, the journey into embodiment is a journey of recovering what is true. Mm, um, beautifully yes. said. Yes, and it, particularly when you look at children, very embodied until we <laughs> gradually learn that it's not allowed. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and it's all in breathing, you know. Yeah. It's all in breathing. The simplest so, yeah. thing. Yeah. But if you know, just to be just to be told to breathe more deeply because it'll help you relax, you know, that does not make sense to me. <laughs> I don't know why? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 why it is the path to, um, yeah, awakening actually, awakening into yes. our naturalness. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there's a certain path to awakening or awareness or spiritual practice meditation and so forth that that one can undertake as a way to escape the body and we're talking about the opposite approach that it is becoming more aware and more connected with our bodies that lets us actually experience difficult and also ecstatic states because we have a body it's like the body isn't the baggage here. The body's the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Want to add anything, Kurt? And then we're going to open this up for questions. Um, I guess just, I mean, the first time I heard about the Dura was uh, on the training. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was one of those kind of, one of those kind of, um, I don't know. It just kind of felt like, oh, is that real? <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, what does that mean? What does that? Mean? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then I remember going through uh, some different uh, embodied practices and actually feeling the uh, uh, the my my dura un unlevel, mm-hmm. uh, loosen, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm. And um, yeah, it was quite a powerful experience. Mm. So awesome. I began to think, oh no, there is something yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. That's also yeah. a great example of how you can hear something and sure, whatever, makes sense, maybe it doesn't. 
But when you feel it in your body, it's a very different. Then you know it in a way that you just is not is it becomes real in a way that you can't get by just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. I think when you've, when you've got your cognitive mm-hmm. way of processing something and you get that embodied experience, you've then got both. Yes. And then they, you know, they, they feed into each other. They, they're Absolutely. able to really connect and talk and make sense. Yeah. Or otherwise, you're just from here. Yeah. Or just from here, you know, like yeah. both. Both need yeah. to connect. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I'd like to open it for questions. Anybody who, you can unmute yourself on your screen there um questions or thoughts and then we'll um move on to a few more fun things anybody want to we do have a couple of comments that were put in the chat about how much people enjoyed that katie and that explanation was very helpful yeah anybody have questions or would like to add something You can unmute yourself by clicking on that little picture of the microphone. They're in such a bliss state, they can't even click the microphone. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to give you one more then. (laughs) This one is... What's that? I was was just wondering, we could suggest... um, anybody would like to share what they're noticing in their body right now yeah that'd be great well uh um, i'm stella and uh, i could feel i could feel this undulation in my spine really well when you prompted us to to feel that uh, and i could really also like almost my brain expand and i've never consciously noticed that so oh. thank you so much for for pointing that out so i could feel the unity mm-hmm. between the dura around my spine and this kind of fluid container around my brain mm. that's really nice felt really nice beautiful thank you thank you thank you anyone else Emma. like to say what they noticed Emma says here, I'm noticing my body saying, I'm so glad you asked about bloody time. <laughs> and then quite a little bit <laughs> for help. <laughs> oh, great. Very good. Yeah, thanks, Katie. I don't know if I have unmuted myself, but yeah. <laughs> it was um, a sort of quiet from my body. Is she actually talking to me? Is she really talking to me? Oh, yes, yeah, she is. Right. <laughs> uh-huh. Let me have it. <laughs> yeah. mm. <Thank> you. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, sometimes our body, I mean, our bodies are talking to us all the time, but we rarely take the time to listen, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you. Beautiful. What's happening for me, and I feel a little bit frustrated, is like when I tuned into what's happening in my body, there are areas where there is some holding, Mm-hmm. And there is pain, mm-hmm. and I get stuck there. I cannot kind of what the other people are describing. That's not where I can go. Mm-hmm. That's a great noticing, and that is always the place to start. Is not so much okay. What am I supposed to be feeling? But what in fact do I feel right now? And bringing our attention there is what enables us to find the wisdom of that and and yeah. what it needs to tell us and where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. There must be a point where you break through and I'm kind of tired of staying with the blockages, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. what I'm hearing you say is the only way out is through. I think generally speaking that's true. Yeah. We are not trying to escape our bodies, which means escape our pain. Mm. Neither are we trying to throw ourselves into the pit of despair. We 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 don't need any more practice of that. No. <laughs> but there is a way in which, when we 
really pay attention to our pain, both physical pain and emotional pain, that, that when we stop trying to avoid it or fight it, that there is a real gift in it. And the gift is that it, it, it's real. It's, it's, it, there is something there for us. Um, uh, I don't think there's any such thing as a life without any pain. I think that's kind of a new age myth. That there, there is always something which is talking to us that needs our attention. And it's, it, pain's job is to get our attention. That's quite true, literally. That's the job of the nervous system part of it. Um, and also, it, I believe it's true emotionally. Something is wanting our attention so that we can make some changes in our lives. And that can be kind of a process to begin understanding what's the... What is this trying to tell me? Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else like to say how they I think I think they're noticing? Yes. Go ahead. I think you were just about to speak, Kurt. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was just going to say that um, uh, I think the qual I think the quality that you just brought in there when when you were just talking to the uh, to the last person is that there that there's also something about the embodiment of a relationship with somebody, and so say that and so last the, thing again, to be please. to be in that stuckness of that there's there's a quality about the embodiment that you bring in relationship to somebody so when okay. you're if you're if you've got a personal practice where you might be staying with some pain that can be a place that you can get stuck or that you can stay in mm -hmm. because you're bringing with you yourself in that place and so sometimes it can it can need or the a relationship uh, with a with a practitioner or with mm. a group or with somebody to be able to help you find a way through it or to be able mm. to uh, connect to a different aspect on not seeing. Mm -hmm. And so like even just then, I guess, just being you be in relationship to that person's pain mm -hmm. in a way where you can empathize, understand, reflect, show it in a different way. Mm. So be a process where it helps that person through uh, something that might otherwise be a place where they can get stuck. Oh yeah, thank you, very true. We need each other as people, and mm -hmm. sometimes in very particular and structured ways, um, sometimes in groups, sometimes with that support. Because yeah, we, we do get stuck, and we do get places that are confusing, or we get places that feel so great, now I don't know what to do with it. So yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Having support, having practitioners, having other groups can really make a difference. Yeah. 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 And yeah. pain's often a signal of fear. Mm -hmm. um, and that breakthrough you, that uh, you were talking about, you know, I wish mm -hmm. I just wouldn't keep getting stuck in the pain. And yeah. I wish I could yeah. get beyond. And, and we do need to be in dialogue with support. Yeah. Because pain on your own is shit yeah. you know yeah. to be feeling pain on your own i mean it's just yeah. you're, you're going to keep on feeling pain you're not going to be able to relax sufficiently to to feel into what's frightening yeah beyond pain and yeah. to fight trying to to then explore what what are the messages you mm -hmm. know what are the voices you know what is my sh what's my painful shoulder saying to me mm -hmm. um what's my painful back saying to me you know um yeah. What's my painful head saying to me? You know, <laughs> yeah. there'll, be, there'll be sentences that kind of transcend the literal from the body mm -hmm. that then br bridge loneliness into, into that place of shared experience mm -hmm. where the whole nervous system can then relax. And it's, you know, because pain is just the resistance to feeling. Mm -hmm. It's the first stage. Mm -hmm. And we can't do it on our own until we've got sufficient compassionate witness internalized inside of us. And we only get that from the outside first. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, yeah. if we've got enough, then we're going to need to buy that in, you know, with therapy yeah. or Thank flexological you. body work. Or, yeah. yeah. 
Yes, I, th I thank God for the people who have been my supporters, healers, helpers. Oh, Lordy. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm very thankful for that. Anybody else would like to say something about what they noticed with that body exploring? Taste of body exploring? Okay. I'm going to give you another one just for fun. So we were playing with uh, breath and uh, to some extent movement and where we place our attention. Um, I'm going get, to give you another chance to play with where we place our attention. And this time with an experience of touch um, that's very tactile, we're going to play with our skin. And to do that, it's very simple. You don't need another person. You need to pick up an object that's sitting next to you, maybe a, a pencil or a pen or a coffee cup or um, a book or something. And let your hand, if you can, in a place where you can lean back so you're not leaning forward, lean back so that your trunk doesn't have to engage its muscles. And then take this small object into your lap let your hands rest in your lap and let your fingers explore, hands and fingers explore and see what do I notice about this thing? Where is it sharp? Where is it soft? Where is it smooth or furry or whatever it is? Is it squeezable? And explore this item and very slowly, for most people, you need to slow your hand down by about half of what it's, how it's currently moving. And bring your, and your mind will wander. That's perfectly fine. That's its job. And then bring it back to your hands and notice as much as you can about this thing. And then your mind will wander. And then you bring it back. And then it will wander again. You bring it back again. Where's the, what's the shape, what's the weight, what's the texture, what's the temperature, and whatever you notice about this thing. And let yourself take in all the air you want. Ah. And if we stay here a while, which, again, this is just a little taste, but if we stayed here quite a bit longer, you would start to notice that it's pleasant. Oh, this feels kind of nice, this little pointy thing right here, putting in the middle of my palm. Or this fuzzy thing feels really nice on the end of my fingertip. Or whatever it is with this item. And because it's not another person, you don't have to worry about somebody's doing something to me, I'm trying to do something to them, all that's gone. It's just you and your skin. And it's, this, it's your, your, the nerves in your skin talking to your brain cells. And take in all the air you want again. Ah. And see how much pleasure your hands are actually capable of that you've probably never noticed before. So this little experience, for some people it will click right away. For some people it takes longer and for some people it's, you know, it can take 20 or 30 or more minutes. So we're not gonna spend that long here on this call, but I encourage you to play with it later also. Um, what is it about this item that feels pleasant to my hand? Your hands are very sensitive in nerves and feel quite a bit more pleasure than you probably are aware. And it's pleasure that has nothing to do with anything. It's not love. It's not sex. It's nothing. It's just sensation. So take a minute for that, and then if you'd like to share what you've noticed, 
unmute yourself and go ahead and do that. We'll see if anyone can still speak if they haven't blissed themselves out. <laughs> this, this is brought back a memory. It's um, a three-year-old kid meets a little toddler sitting with the wooden block. Uh, and, just, and just feeling the texture and the shape. Yes. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, not just my hands, but actually against my thighs and yeah. against my stomach. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a very old, very early memory um, of just, just feeling what it was like to kind of touch it and to actually rub it against myself. Yes, um, yeah. But it, it's it's the, the texture, the warmth of wood and whether mm -hmm. you had an edge or whether you had a rounded corner mm -hmm. and, all the different, and all the different sensations associated with the texture, the color. Yeah. Uh, and it's I'm warmth, mm -hmm. and the thing that the thing that that comes to mind it's immediately it's warmth. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. As children, we're all over this stuff, mud pies and everything. We just have forgotten how most of us as adults. Anybody else like to say what they're noticing? sensations in your hand and also what you notice in the rest of you as your hands begin to wake up what else might change in the rest of you i'm noticing how much more present in my body i am mm -hmm. and to tingle with the sensation mm -hmm. yeah so I can feel everywhere in my body at the same mm -hmm. time. Beautiful. Yeah, when we wake up, one aspect of our sensory awareness, other aspects will also wake up. Yeah. As one person said, I have a whole new relationship with my water bottle. <laughs> Anyone else like to say what they're noticing? Noticing about yourself? This is also, I think, a great example of what happens in a group when we, as we learn the opportunity to learn from each other, that someone says something and that clicks something in me, oh, yeah, and also that we get to be witnessed by, oh, this is what's happening to me, and when I say it, to other people who then can hear it, there's a certain kind of validation that comes from that. Um, and uh, um, we don't have to think, well, I'm this weirdo sitting in the corner feeling up my pencil. That <laughs> there's, uh, which may still be true, but which um, lets us uh, remember and recognize and experience the connection that we have with each other. And this is one of the reasons why exploring and working and playing with another group of people can be so rich. Yeah. Anyone else like to say anything about their experience with the hands? Yeah, um, it's funny that you just said that, Betty, because I noticed. Um, my ability to describe what I was experiencing mm -hmm. temporarily desert me there. It was as if perhaps the more reptilian bit of my brain or something yes. was activated. And so yeah. on the left hand side just quietened down. Yes. So I could have probably described it with an ah or an ooh. Yes. <laughs> but not said anything more eloquent than that. So yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And that's actually what happens in our brains, um, is that 
the, the, synth, the part of your brain that's handling sensory information lights up. And the part of your brain that's able to speak gets sort of quieted down. And that ability to be in a state of pleasure and also relaxed as opposed to excited kind of pleasure, but a relaxed state of pleasure is where we have those blissful states. Um, and uh, the a sexual pleasure and a state of deep relaxation, which most people don't co combine those two. But as you learn to combine those two, that's where those prolonged bliss states are. And they're pretty wordless, generally, because your brain is a, in a, it's a, it's using a different function than the sort of day-to-day -day function. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, can I say something here? Please, yes. Betty? Mm -hmm. um, on, that, on that note, it, what, through activating the sensory receptors in the hands, and as you, as you teach the sensory receptors in the hands, there's more sensory receptors in our hands than any other part of our bodies, apart mm -hmm. from our lips mm -hmm. and our genitals. Mm -hmm. And that's why most people are engaging in sex, is actually the desire is to have more sensory receptivity, <laughs> right. which switches it literally switches yeah. us from reacting into the world, mm -hmm. from determining with our heads what's happening mm -hmm. ahead of time, what's happened in the past. Yeah. It literally switches us into receptivity. Through the sensory receptors of the hands, mm -hmm. we can activate our sensory receptivity. So that's our receptivity to everything else that's happening in our bodies, which is our interoception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also... It awakens our senses. You know, mm -hmm. you can eat slowly once you're in that place right. of receptivity. Yeah. Food taste. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. those wordless experiences of of bliss mm -hmm. uh, that most people only ever really achieve in states of of sexual union when mm -hmm. they're has been enough receptivity that the, 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 the nervous systems have switched from sympathetic to parasympathetic yeah, yeah. into the place of receptivity and projection. Yeah. Then, like you're yeah. saying, Emma, the mind that is determining and, and right. dialoguing, commenting, and judging, and all of that, that just kind of yeah. disappears. You know, yeah. it's, it, it relaxes. Yeah. And we feel. And, yeah. and this is, that's connection, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The world's more. <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes when people will say to me oh i just i just need to turn my mind off and i yeah. um, actually it's not that you need to turn your mind off it, when you turn your skin on mm -hmm. your mind will settle down so we choose where to put our attention and earlier we chose to put our attention on our breath and our body sensations and here we chose to put our attention on our hands, the sensory, on our skin. And that changes then what happens inside of us. And that really is the, you know, the essence of embodiment there. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's another side of embodiment that it, we've talked about what we notice and what we feel inside of ourselves there's another aspect of embodiment which is being able to express ourselves through our bodies so this is um dance play wrestling with your kids you know being able to and sometimes in touch and sex if we are not in the performing the action mode but the ability to let our bodies do what they feel like doing as they feel like doing it is a rare skill nowadays, but really rich and important one. And just as much as part of embodiment as bringing the sensation in. Yeah. We have a little more time. Anyone like to say anything else about their experience with their bodies today, either the breathing or the hands? And um,
and or anyone have a question so far? And, and then I have a question for you, Kurt. Anyone else want to add anything so far? Just unmute yourself if you do. Great. Um, okay, nice big breath. Take in all the air you want. Ah, wiggle around on your seat a little bit. <laughs> Before we change gears here. Um, I want to answer any questions that people might have about growing in embodiment retreat. And I wonder, Kurt, if you would be willing to say a little bit about your experience there and um uh and why you why you feel strongly enough about how useful it was that you were willing to wake up at seven o'clock to get on this call <laughs> <laughs> it's, an ungodly, it's, it's an ungodly hour to get on a phone call in sydney australia <laughs> But I wonder, would you say a little bit about your experience there? A couple, it was a couple of years ago, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was about a year and a half ago. Um, uh, there, was, there was kind of the, the, the key reason why I went was very different to what I got. <laughs> so the reason why I went was because I, I was interested in doing the sexological bodywork training. Mm -hmm. And I um, knew that the course was going to be working with both men and women. And up until that point, I'd only really had any kind of sexual experiences with men. And so I wanted to know, okay, is this something that I can do? Is this something that I'll be comfortable with? And so that was my initial reason for going into the training, into the um, embodiment, growing an embodiment retreat. Uh -huh. What I got from it was a whole lot more. I had no idea really why I was what what to expect, and um, and it was it was it was a whole. It was very powerful. Um, I got to experience Betty your um, concept around the wheel of consent, which for me just kind of blew my mind around the dynamics behind touch mm -hmm. and and just and and, and I, ha I just wasn't aware I just had no awareness of the dynamics behind touch mm. and so to in a very short period of time suddenly have this embodied sense of oh wow that's that's what that is. And I didn't know that was there. And, and, of course, and that's what I mean by the remembering almost. It's um, like, I've been doing that, but completely unaware that I'm doing that. And, and now I've got an awareness around it. And it's like, oh, wow. Um, you know, that opened, that opened up uh, different avenues for me yeah. in, my, in, my, in, my, uh, in my sexual play, really, with, yeah. with partners. Mm -hmm. um, it blew out of the window out of the water sorry for me yeah. um stuff around gender and around sexual identity mm -hmm. um suddenly the gray became a whole lot more gray the black and white got a whole lot less black and white mm -hmm. um and then there was just you know the that that edge of resistance that i was talking about earlier just ex <laughs> just, went, <laughs> just <laughs> massively expanded for me around what I like, you know, uh, what I enjoy. Um, I discovered new things that I thought I didn't know that was there. Uh -huh. um, we did some really be beautiful um, erotic rituals. Mm -hmm. um, we did a three circles and then I think we did like a, a body electric type ritual, mm -hmm. touch ritual. Mm -hmm. um, the three circles for me was, 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 you know, I think whenever you go on any kind of retreat or training that's an extended period of time, say five, this was five days, mm -hmm. I think there's always a point where you really hit that place in yourself that needs to grow. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that and that is needing is needing work. Mm-hmm. And during the three circles ritual, I found that place in me. I was very, mm-hmm. uh, I was incredibly challenged by the. Um, by the eroticism in the room, really, I guess, by the enjoyment and the pleasure that people were experiencing in their bodies. Um, there was a whole load of stuff that came up to me, up, come up for me around women's um, sexual expression. There was a whole load of stuff that came up for me around uh, my taking of sexual pleasure from men. And, oh, just all this stuff just kind of, came up and I just went into shutdown hmm. and, and just couldn't engage, engage with myself. And what happened from that was that, as you said earlier, you get, a, you, you, you get the, um, have done the sex pod training mm-hmm. that are kind of re, uh, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are expanding their training. Mm-hmm. And so they're all at hand during, during the, the, the embodiment retreat. Mm-hmm got to work with two people and I was very, uh, I felt, I, I just felt very blessed to be able to work with somebody who was able to really support me the next day. I had a one-on-one mm. session with them and me, it was challenging, but they worked with me in a way that kind of really shifted what was getting in the way mm, for me. Yeah. And it was, guess what, all to do with my mother. Bless her heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was able to process something in the one-on-one work mm. that I wouldn't have been able to do in a group. I don't wow. And then to then step into the group mm-hmm. and experience something very new and very different. Um, wow. And it was incredibly eye-opening for me. It it. Oh. it it, it just expanded me. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I could explain I was, it. I was about um, to stop you a moment ago and say, wait a minute, we're supposed to be encouraging people to come, not scaring them away. <laughs> 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 it is a yeah. fabulous story. And, mm. and yeah, having that support when you mm-hmm. get to those places that are edgy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And that was, you know, when I've done other retreats and things like that, you don't get that. Yeah. You don't you don't get the one on like that was the beauty of it. You get the you get the group and then you get time with a one-on-one practitioner. So mm-hmm. you can work you can whatever's coming up for you, you've then got an opportunity to work with somebody one-on-one. Mm-hmm. I've never I've never had that experience before. Oh. It's always just been group work. Right. Or you can, you know, grab the facilitator if they've got five minutes in their break. But right. this was structured time for you to really work with what's coming up for you in the group yeah. individually. And then Beautiful. you bring that back into the group, you mm-hmm. know. And that, that was a very unique mm. combination that I hadn't experienced before. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So I want, I want to explain the structure a little bit. Because Kurt alluded to it, but I'm not sure how much we said before. And that is that the practitioners are sexological, certified sexological body workers. And they are there offering their services. So they're, having, they're offering one-on-one sessions. And they're there for six or seven days. And then the participants, the guests, which you were at that time, you are there being part of the groups and the classes and experiences and you get one-on-one sessions every single day with those practitioners who are there and sometimes twice a day there were some of those that were an option. Yeah. so um yeah that's part of the structure which as kurt's describing was so rich yeah mm-hmm. yeah and, and, and i did want to also add i oh. mean there was for me there was a really nice you know, there was cha- there were some challenging workshops and there were some uh-huh. challenging experiences, and then there were just some like 
they're sort of making me emotional now, just so soft mm-hmm. and so, and just such, I mean, we did beautiful foot massage, gorgeous thing, you know, mm-hmm. and we did a mud bath and just mm-hmm. all this just beautiful, sensual awakening the body and, and doing it with each other. And oh, it was, it was, um, so there was some of the, you know, there was some of the more, uh, some of the more uh, workshops that were quite evocative and then there are others that were just so soothing. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Yeah. Yeah. It was very sweet as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I wanted to add about sexuality because of course the question comes up with, is this a workshop about sex and do I have to get naked? And, uh, and when we are, becoming embodied and more aware of our bodies, we want to make room for eroticism to be present, but there's not sexual activity happening in the workshop. It's not a workshop about sex or how to have sex, although it will affect those things in your life. And there's not genital touch, no nakedness is ever required. Um, Mm -hmm. So I want to be, be clear on that in your sessions with your sexological body workers, then there's other kinds of touch that are as appropriate in those sessions. So, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. So there's room for sensuality and eroticism to show up. But that's not, ne- not really the focus of the workshop. It's more about waking up the body senses, pleasure, enjoyment. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, Katie, can, looks I, like can I add? Looks like you're ready to go there. Yeah. No, yeah, I just can't stop talking. But anyway, <laughs> we've got a couple more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What Kurt described is really fundamentally important because mm-hmm. when we are expanding beyond um, our well, we're expanding beyond what we call in sexological body work, our resilient edge of resistance, mm-hmm. which is the, the line of fear. Mm-hmm. When we're expanding into new territory and we're remembering more of who we are or more of who we have run away from mm-hmm. or more of we're, we're embodying more of what once upon a time overwhelmed us, but now we can feel it again mm-hmm. with compassion. Mm. Um, the one-on-one work alongside those expansive um, experiences is so essential for the nervous system for integration mm. um, because without just re-traumatizing and that's what, yeah. what a lot of tantra trainings they take uh, they, they guide people into expansive way out of your comfort zone experiences which is amazing mm-hmm. because you overcome so many things and you're flying and but then bam you haven't got sufficient time to digest and mm. integrate experiences and so you know the beauty of sexological body work is that um everything is step by step by step Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so all the while you're in choice with the listening in with guidance so that you don't enter into that emotional hangover territory Mm. and you can expand and digest your you know the expansion at the same time which makes it which makes this training a very very safely held space Mm. where everybody's expanding at their own pace and you know it doesn't matter what somebody else is necessarily doing Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. what's true for you is what matters and that Mm -hmm. you know the peer pressure to everybody take their clothes off and dance to hot chocolate you know know, if it's 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 too if it's if that's going to overwhelm your nervous system you know, you're not going to be in a place where if you don't go along with it, you're going to be the odd one out because actually right. everything is, yeah. everybody is listened to mm. within what they're able to digest. And then mm. when there are experiences which are, are overwhelming and emotionally charged, then there is that one-on-one support daily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Integrate, which is, yeah, yeah which is mm. what you described beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's exquisite. That just makes me all warm all over. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, we do have just a few more minutes here. Um, 
uh, as a reminder for the Growing in Embodiment retreat that's coming up in September in uh, Tenmouth, uh, Devon, UK. Uh, you can get information about that at cschoolofembodiment.com or at bettymartin.org. Um, go have a look. We'd, we'd love to have to hear from you. And any other questions about any of the stuff that we've played with or talked about today or questions about the retreat? We have a few more minutes. If anyone would like to add anything or ask anything, you can unmute, unmute yourself. Anybody else? Did anybody have any fun here today? That's what I want to know. Maybe not. Or maybe they're having so much fun they can't get the unmute button. <laughs> Other thoughts or questions? Okay. Uh, Betty. Yes. Yeah, I'm having a good time. I'm learning a lot. Good. Uh, I'm wondering if you see in this work, there must be a point where the default wiring from being stuck in the sympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. and to be able to switch over to the parasympathetic nervous system, that mm -hmm. this becomes easier or that the parasympathetic nervous system is the default and the sympathetic yes. becomes the fall yeah. off. Yes. Is this somewhere eventually it will, it will happen if you pursue yes. long enough? Yes. And as, uh, as was said earlier, I think Kurt talked about it, having support from another person who knows how to support you makes all the difference. Yeah. So whether it's in a retreat like this or whether it's a practitioner or whether it's someone that you're learning with, um, that makes all the difference. We do not have to take this journey by ourselves. It really, you can't. Uh, we just need each other's support. And, and sometimes we need particularly skilled support. Because we, as we explore these new places, our fear is going to come up. Of course, that's the job of our fear, to assess whatever risk we're in and to make us be careful. So when our fears come up, we need the support of someone who who um, has the skill to support, to help us with it, both skills and in being present with us emotionally. Absolutely. But yes, things change without a doubt. I think we're, we're certainly testimony to that. Things change. And I don't think there's a point where, at least I don't know, there's a point where you can say, okay, well, I'm all fixed now. I can just get on with my life. I've not found that to be true, that it's a lifelong journey of exploring. Yeah. Well, I found that coming out of freeze is one thing, but then there is a completely different set of challenges coming out. Yes, yes. So ma'am. There is. Yeah. You, you do get out of the emergency room. Okay. And, and you do get to where it's, it's less a matter of, oh, my God, just help me stay on the planet, to, oh, I'm here, now there's more growing to do. You do get out of the ER, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Anybody else before we close? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you all. We're going to, this is recorded and we'll be posting it up shortly, so um, you'll be emailed and you can certainly share it with your friends. We hope that you do. And we'll be doing another one similarly. Deej and Uma will be on um, in a few weeks. We haven't set a date yet. Yeah. So and thank uh, you, Katie and Kurt. Thank, thank you, everybody, for your comments that have been coming in. That's that oh, those yes. of you that don't that want to speak. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for the yeah. responses. Yeah. Thank you all. Okay, my dears, have a lovely day. Continue breathing and feeling up objects around your house. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.
I'm leaving this open to see if we have 